Hey guys, Ash and Kaylee here having a small glass of wine while we, one sip, I always have to have a sip after <laughs> um, while we tell you guys a little bit how to win Thanksgiving. And so our goal during this Facebook Live is to show you how you don't have to go into the weekend with fear that you're going to feel guilty or fear that you're going to overeat or just give you guys some awesome tips so that you can finish the weekend without being super bloated and you still have energy to like rock it next week. So hey Leslie and I think that was April. So um, that is our goal today and I hope you guys stick around for it. We've also added a link up above in the work or the work description <laughs> in the um, live title description. So if you if you add your email to our email list, we'll actually send you a bunch of recipes tomorrow as well. So hopefully you guys sign up for that. Yeah, there's five recipes on there. Yeah, I think it was two appetizers, a side dish, and also two desserts as well. I know they looked very tasty. Yes, Kaylee picked them up. Um, so that's where we're going to start today. So I kind of wanted to start um, with the psyche because for me, I know that when I used to go into holiday weekends, I actually had a lot of um, anxiety and kind of like fear around them because I always felt like I was going to overeat. So, and that fear and that anxiety and that, like, that mental state that was leading me into the weekend always backfired on me because as soon as I started to eat something that would, you would traditionally have during a traditional family dinner, I would start to feel guilty and then it would backfire, like I said, and then I would overeat and then continue overeating for the next couple of days because I felt so damn guilty. So I kind of want to talk about that. So I think as you guys approach Thanksgiving, I think first off, you have to go into it knowing that you're going to indulge a little bit and this is okay. Be you're excited excited it. for it. Yes, and excited <laughs> for it because you guys treat your bodies really well and you're actually taking an interest in what you're eating and you're actually taking an interest in exercising and everything. So make sure you go into it with the mental state that you are going to enjoy yourself. And there's a difference between that and overindulging. So you want to go into the weekend knowing that you're going to enjoy yourself. You're going to have some of your favorite foods, some of those comfort foods that you grew up on without overdoing it. And then without um, setting yourself up to overeat. So I say, I know what works for me now is going into this weekend prepare. So I know on Sunday we're going to be having our family dinner and during that dinner I'm going to be having some extra booze, I'm going to be having some extra desserts and probably some extra calories and I'm okay with this. So I spend my other days eating fairly clean. Even the day of I'm going to be making sure I exercise and then I drink lots of water. Not because I feel guilty but because I know it's going to make me just feel better and less bloated and not retaining a bunch of water. So that's kind of how I mentally prepare and then so I can sit back and enjoy and not have one ounce of guilt and then having that that mental state also sets you up to not the next day wake up and be like okay now I can't eat I need to starve myself and over exercise and do everything to work all those calories off or you get into that mental state where you're like damn it I have no self-control and then I can't win this game and then now all of a sudden I'm gonna overeat because I can't control myself. Just one thing I'd add is that Thanksgiving tends to be the weekend that people put all their pressure for the rest of leading up till Christmas. Yeah, so like, sure. oh, it starts with Thanksgiving and then there's Halloween candy and then there's Christmas. And it's like they make this excuse that from Thanksgiving until spring, it turns into this like binge type of thing. And it doesn't have to be anything like she's saying, anything scary. It's something to be excited about. You're with your friends, you're with your family, you get to enjoy this food. It doesn't have to sabotage your, your weight loss journey, your fitness journey. It's just a fun weekend. Yeah. And another good thing about the psyche Kelly wanted to touch on was about your mental state while you're actually eating that food. Yes. So... There's multiple studies and stuff coming up now all the time about how your thoughts affect you at the cellular level. So basically, when you go to eat something, especially something like a Thanksgiving meal that's higher in calories, maybe higher in fat, higher in some of the foods you normally don't eat, like gluten and dairy and desserts and alcohol, you start to feel guilty. And as soon as you start to have these negative thoughts, it's the same with negative thoughts as any other thing is happening in your life. If you're stressed about work, you're stressed about this, as soon as you have stress on the brain when you eat, your digestion is halted. So it's going to actually make you more bloated, more gassy and feeling more uncomfortable by being stressed and beating yourself up about it. So your digestion is stopping. So sit back, take a deep breath, think about how thankful you are for the food on your plate and for the delicious meal that you're gonna have with your friends and enjoy it and leave it at the table. Enjoy every second, every bite, every conversation you have with your friends and don't feel bad about it because sometimes you need to reward yourself with some yummy, yummy food. 
Yeah, and enjoy your time with your family. Yeah. And not have, have not have that as like a lingering concern that is impeding your enjoyment. Yeah. Right? So you you definitely need to have balance. Now we're not saying that we want you to like head into this weekend overindulging and going crazy for like three or four days straight no. and then all of a sudden like <laughs> Oh, you know, come Tuesday, you're like, oh, I'm good. I, I felt just, really good while I did that. I'll starve myself on yeah, Tuesday. I felt really good <laughs> mentally while I did that. So yeah. we're not suggesting that. We're just suggesting to, that when you when you do choose to have those meals and you have the balance around it, there's absolutely no reason to feel guilt at all. So, but for those of you that have multiple meals throughout the weekend, so you have really big families or you have to go to your spouses, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, whoever's family as in addition to, then that's when all these meals start kind of piling up and how do you stay um, healthy and bloat free during that? So I'm all about my goal in a weekend is how can I enjoy this? Not without the guilt, but trying to be as bloat free as possible. So we came up with a couple suggestions on how you can kind of approach that, especially if you have multiple dinners. Maybe don't worry about it if you have one, but if you have multiples, kind of how can you make that dinner a little bit healthier so you finish it up feeling a little bit and happier. Also picking what you love. So Ash and I were just talking, getting ready for this about like what we want to indulge in. And you were talking about like alcohol and sweets. It's yeah. kind of more your thing. And I'm like, oh my God, give me all the stuffing and all the gravy over dessert any day. So pick what you love. If you're going to pig out, you know, and have the stuffing, the gravy, the mashed potatoes, maybe you don't want to have as much dessert. Yeah. Or maybe you want to have a little bit lighter of a dinner and enjoy the pumpkin pie and like the apple crisp and all that stuff. Just try not to overdo the appetizer, the main, the dessert, and the booze all in one sitting. Yeah. And then feel like, mm, and I'll feel like undo a button after, which is like old me. I used to have to undo my button all the time. Um, I'm not going crazy, by the way. There's bugs in here. I just noticed because we put the light on. But yeah, so that's really important as well. And that also taps into if you're eating what you enjoy then don't feel guilty about it. You're going to be in that better mental state to even digest it. So yeah, definitely go for what you're going to enjoy. But if you want to find that balance with multiple meals, we do have a couple suggestions and that would be coming from uh, what you choose to drink. And then a couple of like how you, like you said, kind of like how you build your perfect plate. Yeah. So like often with people that are struggling, it's kind of nice to actually mentally build your plate before you get there. Roughly. Of course, you're going to see something that sparks your interest, but just have an idea. So one thing that I try to do is that I obviously get my turkey and we're both dark meat fans. Oh, so yes. we tend to go for the dark meat, but go for whatever works for you. Yes, there's more calories and fat in the dark meat, but who cares? Fat is not anything to be scared of. And don't be afraid of the skin either. The skin yeah. on turkey is so good. So it got such a bad rap for so long and it's like, no, that's, it's okay to eat and the skin. gelatin. Yeah. Yes. Matt's laughing yes. over there. Um, and it's, it's gelatin, so it's actually good for you. So think when you're eating the skin, it's actually good for your skin. Sorry if that And it's good it. for like your bones and your cartilage and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but another thing to think about is to get your veggies on the plate. So typically what I do is I'll make my first plate. I'll have my turkey, a bit of stuffing, a bit of mashed potatoes, and then like lots of veggies. And then once I'm done that, if I'm like, okay, I still really want whatever, some sort of cheesy potato or something, I'm still craving it. Yeah then you can go up, you're not starving at this point and you're not gonna just devour that. You'll have a little bit just to kind of satisfy the craving and not to satisfy your hunger. Yeah. So kind of fill yourself up on healthier things first and then go for the treats. Yeah. Cause you wanna finish the dinner satisfied and you don't wanna finish the dinner feeling absolutely disgusting, like you're so bloated and you might have constipation or diarrhea yeah. or And you also don't want to feel deprived. And you don't wanna feel you're deprived. You're gonna start eating cucumbers while everybody's digging in. Yeah. And then sometimes if you have the option to bring stuff to that um, that dinner, then you also are giving yourself some flexibility for some healthy stuff balanced in with the Maybe not so bringing some stuff. of the recipes that you can get from us. Yes, yeah, so just uh. sign up for the email above. Good call. <laughs> Good call. So um, just one thing, I see Kate just said totally agree on the stuffing. I know it's so good. And I have to say, like normally I would definitely want to indulge in my dad's stuffing, but I'm highly motivated right now because I keep breaking out in my skin and I don't know why. I think it's a hormonal thing, but um, so that's my motivation right now not to do that and I'd rather have the alcohol and the sweets. So, but yeah, stuffing is yeah, very good. is my jam. Definitely write and let us know what you guys love to have on Thanksgiving because we like to hear Yeah, what's your else? favorite thing to indulge in and enjoy that you're not going to feel guilty about? I also really like red wine. <laughs> what would have thought? Yeah. And apparently white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Speaking of drinks, oh, yeah. so we'll go into drinks now. Say that. Yeah. So obviously you're being social, you want to have some drinks, but there's things that are a little bit better for you than some others. 
So we kind of picked some of people's fan favorites. Yep. One being the Caesar. We were talking about Caesars and how much people enjoy those, especially when you're having like an earlier get together. It seems to be kind of one of those things you'll yes. have before lunch. Caesars are amazing. Um, unfortunately, they're very high in things like sodium and MSG and the Worcestershire is gluten. high in gluten. Yeah. Um, so there is some cleaner brands of um, mix. Mix. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Of mix that you can get. So one that we love is actually called Walters. Um, so good. So good. It's made in Toronto, so it's local. Um, it doesn't have MSG or any of the preservatives. It's a lot lower in sodium. Yeah. And I think no most gluten. places sell it now. Not everywhere. Um, I've seen it in the health food section of stores, but I've also just seen it in the like juice aisle, like with like the Kamado and stuff like that. Yep. Um, but that's a really good one with clean ingredients. Or you can also substitute and just get tomato juice, a low sodium tomato juice. Yep. I personally don't like Bloody Marys. I like Caesars. Um, yeah. But yeah. that's an option as well. Yeah. Like if I'm going to a restaurant and I love having Caesar, especially if I go out with my dad, he always wants to order a Caesar before we order anything else. And I just skip the Worcestershire. Um, so that's the way I kind of like enjoy, but without getting like all of the excess bloat. So I take out the Worcestershire because it does have gluten in it. But yeah, if you do have the choice of getting some mix, definitely go for Walters. It's amazing. Turnip casserole. I don't think I've ever had a turnip oh, casserole. Oh, my mom makes an amazing really? turnip casserole. It's so good. That's like one of the things I always bypass it's is turnip. It's so good. And it has like, um, it has a little bit of cinnamon and apples and butter in it. Oh, pumpkin and apple pie. Yes. Yeah. Oh, back on the drink. Sorry. So wine is something that we're, we're fine with. Yeah. I mean, it obviously has some sugar and stuff in it, but it is what it is. And then some of the maybe more obvious things that you forget about sometimes. It's just a simple vodka soda, mm -hmm. gin and tonic. You know, those things can be really easy to make, satisfying. And it's also, especially if you do like a vodka um, water, which I often drink with just tons of lemons and lime squeezed into it, you're hydrating yourself as you drink and you're getting vitamin C and antioxidants, and maybe kind of cleaning your liver as you drink that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold, because I don't usually drink that, but I'm sold now. <laughs> you know what, I actually I haven't tried these yet, but I've had so many people tell me about them. I think they're called, and maybe somebody here knows the name, it's like Social or So Light, and they're little cans of oh. um, drinks in the LCBO now. Yes, I had some. And they're like they're low in sugar, and there's not a lot of additives. I've been told that it's like real ingredients. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna buy some for this weekend. I believe it was Stevia. Maybe that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, I believe yeah. it was stevia it was sweetened with. It was very good. Yeah, and, I, heard, and it's, I hate coolers. It's way too sweet for me. Yeah. So that's on my list of things to try. So maybe yeah. I'll grab and they're really weekend. small. So yeah. like if, they're, if you do find it sweet, then you don't. it's not like you're taking down like a huge thing. And just so. pour ice with ice, and it waters everything down. But yeah, I was told they're not sweet at all, and they're super refreshing. And So I'm going to try that. That's, yeah. I'm excited now that I just thought of that. Yeah. I would have never thought to try vodka and water. Smart idea. Yeah. I, you know what? That's what Matt used to drink a lot. Yeah. And uh, so I'm pointing like, over there because he's ice. right there. Yeah. So I used to the ice and then like the squeeze of some sort of citrus to like kind of cut the taste. Unfortunately, they go down really easily sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never been a vodka girl. I don't drink a lot of hard alcohol, but now you sold me on. I'm going to have a bunch of lemon and limes with it. I know I'll have to have at least one Ryan Coke. That's my dad's drink. Oh, so and I really only drink it when I go. I don't even like Honestly, Coke, I don't really like pop, I love but it. there's just something about that, like sitting around the kitchen table at the end of the night, having the Ryan Coke with my dad, that yeah. I'll cave and have one with him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is pretty tasty sometimes, but it's somebody else right here. Um, vodka water with lemon, I agree, so good. Oh my God, Amanda, that reminds me, I forgot to text you back. I'm sorry, I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> I've been using sparkling water with um, ground berries and mint. Ooh, and lemon with vodka. That sounds very refreshing. Yeah, Great you can bring it, deliver. We'll take one. Yeah, there you go. You keep asking her to deliver food, so you can deliver alcohol. <laughs> or you can meet halfway. Um, and then with alcohol, I feel like with all the salty stuff you're going to have and the potential alcohol throughout the weekend, make sure you drink your water. So I'm pointing at my wine while I'm saying that, just kind of ironic, but make sure you drink your water. So do your best to aim during the day for your two liters. So you're definitely hydrated. It's going to help to keep your stomach looking flat, especially the next day. A lot of bloating just comes from water retention. And so make sure you drink your water. So and it's going to suppress your appetite a little bit. Yeah, that too. And make you feel full. So yeah. when you do eat, you're not going to overeat. One thing though, and this is really important, and I used to make this mistake all the time because I, I think maybe 15 years ago I heard someone like Cameron Diaz say, this is what I do to stay skinny. Is they would chug water just before they eat to make them feel full. That's wrong. Don't do that. Yeah. That's going to wash away all of your digestive enzymes. Basically, the best approach if you don't want to get bloated, I just have to set this down because I use my hands so much. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> if you don't want to get bloated is right before you eat, 
while you eat and right after you eat, so say a good 20 minutes before, 20 minutes after, you actually don't want to drink a lot of liquid at all. Yeah. You want as many um, enzymes in your stomach as possible because the more enzymes you have, the faster the food's going to break down. So as soon as you start to dilute them and wash them away, you think you're filling yourself up and that you're just kind of bloated from the water, but it's really going to make you so much more bloated. So just sip if you're hungry or thirsty while you're eating and stuff like that, but really try not to drink a lot while you're eating. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. Actually, one that holistic nutrition gave to me as well. Oh, really? Because I used to drink a lot of um, soda water. Yeah. And she's like, you cannot, and I was having a lot of digestive issues, and she's like, you can't drink that every time you eat. She's yeah. like, you're screwing up all of your enzymes. Oh, so. yeah. I used to chug water because I just, I love it when I'm eating, and so it's been a really, I catch myself picking things up, and I'm like, don't drink it, and it sounds so silly, like if you want water, have water, but just try to wait it out a little bit, let your food digest, and then you can go in for it. So try to get it in earlier in the day, maybe when you do a workout, and earlier in the day. So make sure that's, you that, That's hydrate. been a huge thing with my bloating, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that actually, not that we're even thinking of talking about this, but it actually reminds me, another thing that, uh, a misconception that people think is that if they have gum, that's a good appetite suppressant. <laughs> we'll change your food for boost, right? That's funny. <laughs> um, it actually does the opposite. So for those of you that are like, oh, I'm just going to chew gum while people are hanging out and, you know, maybe it will suppress my appetite. It actually increases your appetite. So that's a big misconception. Yeah. It actually starts to train your body that food is on its way yeah. and it starts to produce all of your enzymes. Yeah, too, it too. messes up with your digestive system. Yeah. So when you're starving, especially, you don't want to chew gum. Yeah, so it's actually a really bad idea to chew gum. Um, I don't recommend it at all because of that, but most importantly because of the aspartame that's mm -hmm. often found in it. So that's another thing. Don't, uh, those old school, like when you talk about Cameron Diaz, don't use that as an appetite suppressant. Just... Yeah. And it's weird because I'm a huge, I was a huge gum, like, lover, and then I get to school and they're just, like, ripping on, I'm like, how can gum be that big of a deal? And then when they actually explain the process of, like, your body thinking that it's eating, mm -hmm. and these digestive enzymes and everything being released, and your body's so confused, that I'm like, oh, okay, that, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. And it and it actually um, increases your need for, or your desire, I should say, for sugar, too. Because when you have mm -hmm. a lot of um, aspartame type products it actually increases your desire to want to have um, sugary things because it almost teases your palate to want something I think I think I read like 300 times the amount of um, uh, like sugar flavor so compared to like a regular tablespoon of sugar so definitely don't have stuff like that yeah when really you're trying to lose weight <laughs> diet anything just has to go like yeah. it, it's so funny to me when people are like yeah but I had a diet coke There's yeah. zero calorie I'm like Maybe at that moment you consumed less calories, but in the grand scheme of things, you will be consuming more and it's going to be worse things for you. The oh my sweets, gosh, the yeah. cakes, and it actually tricks your brain when you're eating things or consuming things that are sweet that don't have any calories because your body starts to think, okay, sweet comes in, no calories. There's nothing for me to do. I don't have to digest it. It's nothing. It's going in. It's going out. So when you actually eat that piece of chocolate cake or something, your body doesn't actually know how to respond to sweets in the same way. Um, so that's another reason that you don't want to do it. And it spike your insulin. Oops, sorry, I just spit on Oh, here. I didn't feel it. You're good. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. So that could be a whole other Facebook Live, but... I was wondering if you should drink the suggested glass of water half. Yeah. So if you do it like water like a half an hour before, it's fine. But I wouldn't do any closer than that. It's the whole chugging water. I used to do that too, by the way. Just chugging water in general is actually hard on your body. Yeah. And like... Sometimes it's all you have time for, but... Like when I'm working out, I do like to chug water sometimes, mm -hmm. but... It, uh, it's more chugging it right before you eat that Kelly's saying. It's not, it's not don't aim for your two liters a day or whatever feels right for your body, making sure that your pee is fairly clear. Um, but yeah, like just, just don't chug it right before. Um, which actually reminds me as well. I know what you're going to say. say that asparagus? asparagus? <laughs> yeah. That we were going to say if there is asparagus there, maybe put asparagus on your plate because it's a diuretic and helps to balance out some of the salt that you're likely going to be consuming. Like even gravy has lots of salt in it. Like everything that we enjoy having like in these comfort meals uh, with our families typically are pretty salty. So um, asparagus is a good choice because it does, it is a little bit of a diuretic. And then we had two things that we say um, to have after a meal. So if you mm -hmm. do eat some things that make you feel a little bit bloated, so maybe even if you didn't overeat, but you had something that made you feel bloated, like a little bit of gluten if you're sensitive like I am or dairy, um, I say sometimes just have like a quick sit swig of um, apple cider vinegar. I don't recommend doing that all the time. It's highly acidic and it can actually be really damaging to your esophagus and your teeth and everything. 
Um, but once in a while, sure, give it a little chug. And or it, just mix it with water. You, or mix you it, with water. it with water. Yeah, it does dilute. I just mean don't chug it all the time because yeah. it is really hard on like the enamel and everything in your teeth. Yeah. But I'm a shot kind of girl with, with apple cider vinegar, not with alcohol. Um, so don't buy me a shot if you see me at the bar. You but, can buy me a shot. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks, not me. Um, but with apple cider vinegar, I'd rather get that flavor over with quickly. So if I am feeling like super bloated, um, I will have a quick chug of that and then I'll follow it with water. And so she suggested that and I said, well, what my family likes to do is, and if you are partaking in some alcohol fun, as we always grab a bottle of peppermint schnapps and pull that out after dinner, um, the peppermint will help actually settle your stomach. So it's one of those things when after we're done eating and we're like, oh, and you're thinking like, how am I going to keep socializing with the family? My dad always, or my mom pulls out the bottle, gets a few glasses of ice, we have a few glasses of that. And it actually really does help settle your stomach. It's so you pretty have impressive. you a glass of ice? Yeah, on the rocks. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's not very good and warm. You got to chill it and just an ounce, an ounce yeah. <laughs> on the there. rocks and just sip on that and that will, uh, it also just has like that cooling effect. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're full and you feel like hot, it's just like a really nice way to like Cleanse your palate, reduce the bloating, yeah. continue having fun with the family. Yeah. Can you tell I'm excited to go home for the weekend? Yeah, as you should be. Yeah, and we used to actually have, and we still sometimes do, is uh, brandy after. So it's like the opposite effect is the warming effect of something going down um, mm -hmm. down into your tummy, and it feels really good and comforting, and you, you sip on it. So it's like it lasts a while, and it's very good for socializing. Yes. So... But yeah, does anybody have any questions? Like, tell us what your favorite meals are and tell us if you have any questions about certain things that you're looking to make healthy or anything, what you're thankful for, anything before we go. Um, so for those of you that are signed up for Royally Fit Online, I did add the apple crisp recipe on the breakfast option for this month's meal plan, but that can totally be used as a dessert for Thanksgiving as well. Um, I just put it under breakfast because who wouldn't want to have apple crisp for breakfast when it's a healthy, dessert delicious option. Yeah. And then, like I said, the, there's two other desserts linked if you sign up. Um, I think one's like a chocolate double fudge brownie and one's like um, it was like a, pear. Like a baked pear. It's yeah. got like cinnamon and maple it's syrup really and nuts and stuff on it too. Yummy. Yeah. Uh, I think there say, was some up above before. We learn before, something but... new every day. I always... Oh, you already read that one. Um, I've been using... Oh, we already read that. Read that. Oh, I thought I said something. Pumpkin pop pie and apple crisp. Oh, that's Amanda's favorite. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can't res resist my hubby's pumpkin and apple pies. Oh, you've talked about his pies before. So he makes pies for you? You're so yeah, lucky. Yeah, he's such an artiste. Ugh. Yeah. Pie is not my... F I'm not a very good baker. Have any of you ever had gluten-free stuffing? Sorry I popped on this late. No, that's no problem, Danica. Um, it's funny you ask that because we were just talking about that earlier because that's the one thing I love at Thanksgiving um, we're actually not having turkey this year, so it's not even like I have the option to have oh. stuffing if I wanted to. We're switching it up a little bit. Um, I haven't tried it, and I don't know if I'd even want to unless I'm celiac. So, but I feel like if you, what if you did it with like a sprouted grain bread? I feel like you could make it decent. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it away for next year. <laughs> I bet you, you know who probably has one? You could look it up is, um, oh, she glows. I oh, feel she, like she would have one. Yeah. Oh, she glows. Go on her website and check. Cause I bet you that if somebody's going to have it, it's going to be her. Yeah. I can, I'm find, sure I've seen one of hers actually. Yeah. She I always finds a way to make comfort food. I saved food. one on Pinterest like forever ago, like years ago. And I can't find it. Now. I have no idea where I pinned it, but it was like a gluten free, dairy free, who knows if it was delicious or not. Some things you just can't quite get. Yeah. You know? That's the one I don't know if I'd be willing to do unless I was celiac. But um, I'm sure there's some good out there. But check her website and see and let us know. Um, yes, I've made gluten-free stuffing. I've used the glutino bread and it works well. Toast the bread uh, a bit in the oven. Oh, there you go. You have your answer right there. I'm um, See, Amanda has somebody in her family that's celiac. So she'd have to make something like that. So yeah. that's perfect. And then there's a lot of butter and stuffing, right? I'm assuming. Yes. So you can Usually. use like the earth balance, yep. which tastes exactly like butter to me. So I, that's why I think, I think you could do it. Yep. I think it's a good challenge to try. Um, thanks sisters. It's my fave and I am trying to figure out my stomach issues and can't give that up. Well, it's only one weekend, Danica. It's only one weekend. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, your stomach issues we can address. Um, on a whole, on like something that you you spend your day to day doing, okay, right but when it comes to your stuffing, if that's something you really enjoy, enjoy it or try what Amanda suggested above. And another tip is, if you've had a big meal and you really don't want to, you know, screw up your entire weekend, don't take the leftovers home. 
Just yeah. leave them where they are. You know, people try to push them on you, like, take the cake, take this, don't take it. Yeah. You know, offer it to somebody else, give it to like the starving student or somebody in your family that could use it. Just, or if you're the one hosting, give them away. Yeah. Keep the turkey. Yeah. Of course. But like, if there's things like, you know, pies and desserts and pumpkin cheesecake and this and the other thing, get them out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great one. And, yeah. yeah. And also, like, on that, when it comes to bringing food, if you have been like requested to bring food, don't feel bad about bringing something healthy because a lot of people want something healthy when they're there. They will be grateful that you brought it. Not everyone wants to feel like they're constantly eating bad food. So yeah. don't feel about that and then you can take that home. Oh, we were talking about the asparagus. One of the appetizer recipes I put in is um, prosciutto wrapped asparagus. Yeah, looked yeah. Good. Um, look at Nicole already put down a stuffing recipe from Oshi Gold. Yes, for the win. Uh, okay, I have to check that out when we're done here. And then Amanda said, Danica, if you want to message me, I'm happy to share how you've made it before. Oh. That's great. Oh, that's so nice of you, Amanda. I Thank love you. That. That's great. Uh, and sorry, once again, I haven't messaged you back yet, but <laughs> it's been a crazy week. Um, so anyways, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know if you have any more questions. We will be on here again um, for the next 24 hours to see if anybody has any questions. Don't forget to sign up. It's our general email list. So if you're on there, don't worry about it. But if you aren't, make sure you sign up in the link above. So we'll send the recipes to you tomorrow. And then that way you have a couple days to prepare should you want to use any of them. Um, and then anything else? Oh yeah, on Friday, we have a very hot topic for you ladies. You will not want to miss. So if you can sneak out of work, for 10.30, please do it. We're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. Yeah, this is, I feel like almost a little nervous to do this one because I feel like it's so controversial and there's so many different ways to do it. There's so many opinions. So we're going to give you what we've researched, what we know, what we've been trying out, what we like, what we Bless don't you. like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, check that out. It'll be at 10.30 Friday morning. Yeah, and you can watch it after too, but if you have questions, write them down so you don't forget and then meet us at 10.30 on Friday. Sneak out of your work, go into the bathroom, whatever. If you're taking a really big <laughs> poo at 10.30 and then watch it. And then, yeah, and then because I know it's a really hot topic right now. Yeah. And uh, one I've been extremely hesitant to talk about, but I'm excited to, to talk and kind of um, hopefully have some revelations with you ladies. Uh, I thought I saw somebody else write something, but I guess not. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and it, it, hopefully you didn't get too wet today. And we look forward to seeing you on Friday. Okay, bye Take care. guys. Bye.